Hello, my name is Ross Marshall, and I'm here to continue the series in Universal Reconciliation of All. Before I mention, we would talk about what is the will of God, not his wish, not his desire, not his hopes and fancies, or his gambles, but what is his will and I don't mean will in a passive sense, but a very active uh, sense. I'll, uh, rather than weave it out of my memory, I'll uh, read from uh, the papers I've written on the subject so I can be clear, clean, and concise. <clears throat> First, I want to quote... Uh, Quotation from Epicurus, 341 to 270 B.C. It says, well, Is God willing to prevent evil, but not able? Then he, is not op then he is not omnipotent. Is he able, but not willing? Then he is malevolent. Is he both able and willing? Then whence cometh evil? Is he neither able nor willing? Then why call him God? Huh? And to read. <clears throat> God has a will just as he created man in his image with some form of self-will. And his will is to be done on this earth as it is in heaven. Now, what is his will on earth as it is in heaven? other than he wills all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Is his will that some be saved and the rest not? Is his will that many not be saved and the rest are free to come for it? No. His will is for all humanity to be redeemed and reconciled to him through the drawing of his Son, Jesus Christ, in his resurrection. There should be no question about this, but there is. A majority believe that his willing of all to be saved is contingent upon certain things, and that because of these contingencies, most shall never see the salvation of God. Apparently, these contingencies are the very obstacles and the causes of so many temporary failures. But God's will is predetermined. God has all the power to accomplish his desired original will to have all people with him. First Timothy Timothy two verses three through four. This is the original blessed hope for all mankind, spoken of by all the prophets. And this glad tidings of great joy is not impossible for God. Luke one thirty seven. His mercy endures no matter, for what he wills he does, and what he does cannot be thwarted. Psalms 136, Job 23:13, and 42, verse 2. Even where the most heinous sins abound the greatest, it is all within his will that grace must abound the more. Romans 5:20. To accomplish this, he draws, or drags, all to himself in Christ, while atoning for the sin of the whole world, and not merely for believers only, but all the families of the earth. John 12, 32, 1 John 2, verse 2, and going back all the way, Genesis 12, verse 3. <clears throat> This is the blessing coming upon all mankind in the work of Christ and the triumph of pure grace. What a wonderful sight it shall be to see all humanity singing praises to him, Psalms 66, 3 through 4. For all will then see that he is greater than the adversary that was in the world damning people, 1 John 4, 4. His perfect love 
casts out fear, and it casts out all the causes of fear. Limited atonement. His love is the wholesale destruction of the devil's works, sin, death, and hell. First John three eight, and First Corinthians fifteen twenty six. It is reasonable to assume that since the adversary, the old devil himself, is a great one, and God is greater than he is, then is not God even so greater in power and mercy against our adversity towards him? The answer is an affirmative one. For, quote, the Lord God is merciful and gracious, long-suffering, and abundant in goodness, Exodus 34, 6, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and forsaking not, Nehemiah 9.17, quote, whom will not forsake nor destroy, Deuteronomy 4.31, and quote, and will not turn away his face from you, Second Chronicles 30, verse 9, and quote, and will not keep his anger forever, well, for all the eons, ages, Jeremiah 3.12, God's will controls all things and works all things to the good for the benefit of those who love him. You may think he just does it only for those who love him, but we have to understand he does things for our benefit, yeah, but for all, us to see out there that he's doing it for everything else on behalf of us. He even blesses and gives gifts to the rebellious ones as well as to the righteous, Psalm 68:18, and has mercy and compassion on the ignorant, Hebrews 5:12. Moreover, what his soul has yearned for, he shall do, Job 23:1. That is interesting, isn't it? <clears throat> Let us not question the almighty sovereign creator who put the two trees in the garden, left the door, back door of Eden open, let the serpent come in and go from the garden, harden Pharaoh's heart, created good and evil, make some for honor and some for dishonor, put a lying tongue in the mouths of his prophets, told the servant to steal the colt for Jesus, used the Jews and the Romans to to their dishonor to crucify Christ, sent Satan to destroy all of Job's possessions, even kill his family, kill all the innocent firstborn of Egypt rather than the Pharaoh himself, slaughtered all the stupid Egyptian stoolies in the Red Sea, loves, purposes some, and hates, restricts others, makes some rich, and makes some poor. It is not the author of confusion but the author of blinding men so they may choose to believe lies rather than the truth and become the authors of confusions themselves. Blind some Jews for the benefit of bringing light to others, Gentiles, that is, works all to the good, saves all flesh, draws all men to himself, is within all and through all things, will be all in all and in all men, created man's self-will, and it is he who has the right to arrest and control it, and will save all mankind. What God wills, he gives, doesn't he? I'm going to read some verses, do some little commentaries on it, each one. We have Job 23.13. Quote, Yet he is one, and who can turn him back? What his soul has yearned for, he shall do. The limitarian lip servers attempt to weaken the force of our arguments from the desire of God by pointing off the word desire as a passive hope. However, something must be said against this. It may be established as an important truth that Yahweh desires the salvation of all men, for the scriptures positively declare he desires 
otherwise they deny excuse me uh, for the scriptures policy to declare that whatever, whatsoever God desires that he doeth Job 23 13 they cannot deny that God does whatever he desires otherwise they deny the Bible he will in his own time save all men because he wills all men to be saved 1st Timothy 2 4 and there's a Greek word for will other ones for other uh, aspects of God but for will it's a pretty fixed one <clears throat> but our fellow newspeak soothsayers instead of acknowledging the irresistible force of this argument and yielding to the truth strive to raise sophistical obstacles in man's present condition and nature to show that God's desires are not 100% accomplished in other words, they labor with all of the talents of sophistry they possess to build up an antithetical argument, which makes him utter wicked, makes him utter wicked falsehoods when he declares that he gets what he desires. Now, we humbly submit that when the Creator has declared that he desires to have certain things, and that whatever he desires he gets, it is most irreverent and unreasonable to commence raising objections and to take the strange ground that because we cannot see with our limited capacities the ways and means by which God will satisfy his desires therefore he will never satisfy them they insist God will not get whatever he desires when the Bible declares he surely will we insist though that because the Bible says he will God will get what he desires Quote, now, if any one of you is lacking wisdom about this, let him be requesting it from God, who is giving to all, man in brackets, generously and is not regretful, and it shall be given to him. That's James 1, verse 5. God's will and not ours. Thank you. I'm glad it's not ours. Look what we've done. <clears throat> Let's read Matthew, this last verse, and then we will uh, go to part three in the next video and continue. <clears throat> we have Matthew 6.10. <clears throat> God inspires the hearts of the good to pray for the salvation of all men and say, as Jesus said, now, you have to listen more closely. Thy kingdom come, thy will be come done, as in heaven, on earth also. This will to be done, Matthew 6.10, is, quote, He doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand, or say unto him, What doest thou? Daniel 4.35 hmm. In other words, well, he's going to save everyone. Well, wait a minute. Well, what are you going to do that for? Well, uh, we, we, we uh, think the book says you're only going to save some. What doest thou? <laughs> Quote, Now, he worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. That's Ephesians 1.11 the will of God, then, will be done. No power can defeat it. It is certainly a doctrine of revelation that our God will save all men, for this is his will to be done. And this is by a man named Alfred Manfred uh, back a hundred so years ago. Rewritten a little bit. Makes a good point. <clears throat> because he wills the salvation of all men, therefore he wills that believers should be praying for them in acknowledgment. Each and every one, from our loved ones to our enemies, for good people and for those who work evil, we are not to be partial in praying for people. We are to pray for all human beings. I don't care the, about the rhetoric you hear. Oh, well, we're only supposed to pray for kings and this and that and certain kinds of people. No, let's cut through the chase. It's just real simple. We're to pray for our enemies. We're to pray for everyone we run across. An acknowledgement. 
of this truth. Okay, let's go to part two. Praying is reaffirming God's will, not praying and trying to get God to do his will that he might not do. Or, please save this person, even though I think maybe you're not going to, I insist that, you know. No, praying is reaffirming his will. Okay, we'll talk about that in our next video. Thank you for listening.